Blackmagic announced their best A10 Mini switcher yet, the A10 Mini Extreme, plus an update to their web presenter and Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. Let's break it down in this episode of Video Signals. The biggest announcement is the release of the new A10 Mini Extreme and A10 Mini Extreme ISO. Extreme is aptly named, this thing is a beast. It's got eight HDMI inputs, two HDMI outputs, two USB ports, and a headphone output in addition to the standard two audio inputs and ethernet port. On top of that, it has lots of compositing and keying effects at a sophistication level that you'd find on their $10,000 Constellation AK switcher, all in a portable $1,000 package. So let's break it all down. Most obvious update is it has double the amount of input options with eight HDMI inputs. Now you might be thinking, I have no need for eight different cameras. And that's probably true, but these inputs don't have to be cameras. More on that later. Like the previous A10 models, this can handle anything up to 1080p at 60 frames per second, and it will automatically convert mixed sources. It also has an extra HDMI output. So you could have one output for your multi-view display to see all the source previews and audio levels and other output, and another output as a final mix for any of the eight inputs if you needed to send it out to a projector at an event or some other source. HDMI one has direct buttons for control over which output you see on the ATEM itself, HDMI 2 has to be controlled from the ATEM software. The other thing that got doubled is USB ports. There's now two of them. So one could be connected to a hard drive for recording while another is connected to your computer, serving as a webcam or streaming online. But obviously there is the gigabit ethernet port for streaming directly or controlling the ATEM on a local network. Grant did make a comment that it could be also used for future stuff. There's gigabit ethernet built in. You know, we're gonna be able to use it for a few things in the future as well. But another use for that extra USB port is tethering. You can plug your phone directly into the ATEM and use your phone's data for streaming directly or as a backup to the internet connection. This is huge for streaming in weird locations or to have as a backup for spots that might have iffy internet connection. And phone tethering is not just for the extreme models. It's available as a free software update for the A10 Mini Pro and Pro ISO. And the last port added is a headphone output. Obviously monitoring your audio is important, but none of the previous models had a headphone port. You'd have to monitor the audio from the HDMI output or on your computer. So this is a much needed addition. The headphone also has its own buttons to control the monitoring levels. And there's still the standard two 3.5 millimeter audio inputs as seen on all the previous ATEMs. So all the extra inputs and outputs are great, but where the ATEM Mini Extreme really shines is the powerful video effects it has built in that I believe the only other Blackmagic mixer that has comparable features is their $10,000 AK Constellation. Uh, so now I've had the ATEM Mini Pro uh, since it was released and I rarely use it. If I'm doing live streams, I need the flexibility of doing custom layouts, bringing multiple sources into one shot, adding overlays like social media posts and lower thirds. And the ATEM Mini, it just does not really let you do that. Uh, you can kind of hack it, sort of find a way to do that, but it's not really built to do that. It's built to just take four sources and give you a nice easy way to mix them out and then stream it or record it somewhere else. So I've been doing all my live streaming with Vmix which is a software encoder and mixer. And there are other few big ones like uh, OBS and Wirecast. Uh, so hardware encoding and mixing would be more preferable since a dedicated hardware device just for mixing and just for streaming is much more reliable than a computer that has lots of processes running on it. And you know, it depends on the computer hardware and your graphics card. There's a lot of other factors, you know, if your computer is going to successfully and reliably stream out uh, whatever it is that you're trying to stream. So going the hardware route was usually a much more expensive endeavor, but with the Extreme, a whole new world is unlocked. So first up, the Extreme has two DVEs instead of just one, which you'd find on the Pro model. So DVE is just digital video effect, and it's just a broadcast term for any time you'd manipulate a video source, like shrinking it and overlaying it on top of another video source for a picture-in-picture -picture effect. So picture-in-picture -picture is pretty much the only thing that you can do on the Pro with the one DVE. Two DVEs means uh, you can manipulate two video inputs and then overlay them on top of a background or third source. So the best and most obvious use case is having two shots up during a live interview uh, in a split screen layout. So that alone is huge and unlocks tons of possibilities, but the Extreme also has Super Source, which is a four DVE multi-layer compositing engine. So that means you can take four individual inputs and arrange them however you like, and then layer that on top of another source. So think sports, think esports, multiple cameras up, uh, multiple people up on screen. Uh, think multi-person multi panel discussion where you have multiple people on their own screen from their own camera source. Super source is an addition to the two DVEs. So I believe in theory, you can make a custom layout with six individual HDMI video sources 
on top of a seventh video source or still image background. That is huge. That's huge for a software thing that has a lot of processing power, uh, you know, to try to do it off of a computer. There's also support for layering images above and below the super source or DBE. So think custom multi-person shot layouts with name keys and your own design and branding. I do this all the time in vMix. But now you can do it in a hardware-based environment on the A10 Mini Extreme. Uh, the Extreme has two separate media pools, which can each store up to 20 images. And it finally, doesn't clear out the media pool when you shut down, it will save all the images. That was always kind of a frustrating feature. The media pool is also useful to downstream key. So that's also another fancy broadcast word for basically applying something over your output, no matter which source is selected. So like a logo or some sort of bug that is always on screen, no matter which input you're selecting. A downstream key was always available on the Pro, but you had to turn it on in the software and now there's a dedicated button for it on the extreme. You can also use the images for stinger transitions where a logo or image wipes across the screen during a transition, which is a nice, another professional touch. If you haven't used broadcast hardware or only use streaming software that lets you layer tons of sources, you might think, what's the big deal about SuperSource and DBEs? I get you, I was there. I thought if the software lets me stack a bunch of videos together, then it must be reliable. But if you actually stack six independent live videos, sources in a software encoder, you need a very, very beefy machine and graphics card to process that in real time or run the risk of the computer crashing. I have also been there. You don't find these features in broadcast hardware as much except super high-end setups because with broadcasting, you wanna make sure that whatever layout you put together and whatever sources you mix together, it will be 100% reliable and not freeze, not crash, not buffer, just work. And that's why seeing these abilities in a little piece of hardware is extremely impressive and unlocks the possibilities found in super high-end setups uh, and broadcast productions that you now find in a tiny thousand dollar box. But wait, there's more. It also includes four independent chroma keyers. Uh, so now on the pro model, you had chroma keying, uh, but you could only key one source. So one source, one camera. So if you had two cameras pointing at something with green screen, you'd have to redo the key for each angle. So it was really only usable with one angle. Uh, both four independent keyers, you can key out four different cameras or inputs and then layer them on top of still images or any of the other four available HDMI sources that you have. And any attempts, chroma keying is really good. Uh, so like I've debated using the Pro uh, just to key out green screen shots to then send a vMix. Uh, because it's a way better keying system uh, than anything else in any of the software-based environments. So with four keyed video sources, on top of the four other video sources, you have the possibility of virtual sets uh, or any other number of uses. So this is why I said earlier that having eight HDMI sources unlocks a lot of flexibility, even if you don't have eight cameras. So you can plug in computers to bring in people via Zoom or playback videos. Uh, you can get a USB-C to multi HDMI output. So you can have one computer playing two to three different monitors, which means that's two to three different sources running into the ATEM Extreme. Uh, they didn't really touch on this in their announcement, but the ATEM also integrates with their HyperDeck, uh, which is a recording and playback device from Blackmagic. So if you need to playback pre-recorded videos, uh, you could play it off a laptop, but you'd have to get the, play the playback timing right, you know, switch over and hit play at the right time. Uh, or you could play it off a HyperDeck, which communicates with the ATEM and can automatically queue and playback videos. Uh, so that's another nice feature that sort of all integrates with the whole Blackmagic ecosystem. Uh, Chroma Keen works the other way as well. So there are a lot of web-based apps that can create dynamic graphics and pull in social media posts and comments uh, and give you dynamic effects. So Singular Live and Megaphone are two uh, uh, some big ones. Um, so this un also unlocks the uh, Pro Presenter app, which is another very handy pre presentation app uh, that also gives you a lot of effects and ability to create dynamic graphics and titles. Uh, so all of these apps are keyable, and then you could overlay them on top of your other video sources and create some dynamic titles and social media graphics. So there's truly a lot of possibility here. So this is a huge leap in the ATEM Mini product line. This is now their fifth ATEM uh, product. We had the ATEM Mini come out a few years ago, which was just for mixing, no streaming or recording. Last year, Blackmagic launched the ATEM Mini Pro and ATEM Mini Pro ISO. So check out my interview with Blackmagic's Bob Coniglia on the Pro. The Pro added the built-in encoder so you could stream online directly from the device, no computer required or you could record directly to a hard drive. With the ISO model, you could then record all four feeds independently, plus the mixed output. All these ATEMs had really impressive features under the hood if you connected it to your computer and ran Blackmagic's ATEM software. But digging into the software is slow and tedious and a bit of a pain. The name of the game of broadcast is buttons. Lots of buttons. Buttons let you do things so much quicker. That's why people pay $3,000 for the ATEM 1ME advanced panel, which by itself does absolutely nothing except give you lots of buttons to control other Blackmagic hardware. But now we've got the Extreme, uh, which by the way, can also be controlled by the 1ME panel. So obviously it's bigger to accommodate the extra HMI ports, but 
it also has lots more buttons. It's got buttons for headphones, it's got buttons for the chroma keys, downstream keyers, DVEs, and the super source. It's also the way you can control the buses and how you assign the images. They also added more transitions and there are buttons for those. There are buttons to control the camera. So in the Pro, they added the ability to control the settings of any connected Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera over the HDMI connection, uh, but it all had to be done in the software in order to adjust the actual settings. Now there are buttons to directly adjust the iris, uh, shutter speed, black level, and focus. There are also buttons for six macros. So macros are like programmable shortcuts where the ATEM does a lot of things at once. So like setting up a super source shot where you would assign four different inputs to various positions, plus your layout overlay, plus your background, that would be something that you would want to program into a macro. So you just push one button and the whole shot is already assembled and up and ready to go. So insane amount of features, I'd say calling it extreme is not hyperbole. Under the hood, the tech and software abilities have really been leveled out across all the Blackmagic uh, ATEM and their broadcast products. Now, the main difference is, are you using the more consumer end HDMI cables and cameras, or are you using the pro level SDI? So you could build out a really impressive setup with this, but you're still at the mercy of HDMI. It's a lot easier to get knocked loose, uh, and you can only run a cable about 50 to 100 feet max. But for most setups, especially stuff today, uh, that really doesn't matter. The ATEM Extreme Pro is going to be 995, and the ATEM Extreme Pro ISO is 1295. ISO adds the ability to record all eight sources independently, plus your mix output. If you're enjoying this video and want to see more videos on media production and streaming, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If that wasn't enough, there's still two more product updates. The other update in the world of streaming is a refresh of their web presenter. Now this device has a special place in my heart. This is the original web presenter. Uh, it was the first streaming device that I bought, uh, but it's a really weird device, yet it has come in very handy for its flexibility. So version 1.0 of this box, you could either plug in HDMI or SDI, uh, as well as XLR audio and or analog audio. Uh, and then you could plug the USB port into your computer and it would act as a webcam. It wasn't an encoder, it would only appear as a webcam. Uh, and it also only gave you 720p uh, video. So it wasn't full HD, it did not do 1080 HD. Uh, also, you had to buy this control panel on the front for another $100 to actually make it usable. But at the time before the ATEM minis, it was a handy way to have a two camera mixer and use XLR microphones with ha without having to convert them. Uh, I use this device on my deep dive on virtual events uh, for a live stream that I did. And with the two outputs, I was able to switch it. Uh, you know, this was before ATEM Mini Pro actually existed. Uh, but admittedly, it did have a weird use case and it wasn't the most practical, uh, especially when it cost $500 or $600 when you had to add the extra panel. Uh, and then now you could just pick up an HDMI to USB adapter for $20 and do mostly the exact same thing. So they did a complete redo of the web presenter with a much clearer use case. It is now an SDI encoder to use with their broadcast level products to send out a live stream. So gone is the HDMI and XLR ports uh, and the analog ports. Uh, it's now just for SDI with an SDI in and out. Uh, it does have HDMI out, but that is for monitoring only. Also added is a second redundant power source, uh, USB, and an ethernet port. And also most importantly, the front panel is now included. So you don't have to purchase an extra front panel. So unlike the previous version, this is an encoder that can encode a video signal and then stream it out to any web destination. Uh, it has a software utility you would load up on your computer to adjust all the settings, similar to the ATEMs. Uh, and obviously there is the ethernet port for internet connectivity, but it also supports phone tethering, the same thing that we saw in the ATEM updates. It still has the same webcam functionality as the previous model. So like the ATEM Extreme, you could both stream online and send the video out as a webcam over Zoom or to QuickTime for monitoring. Now my favorite feature is going to be its monitoring screen. Uh, now this monitoring screen looks like something out of The Mandalorian or WandaVision if they did do live streaming, uh, which I guess WandaVision is sort of doing live streaming. As someone uh, who's had some disasters of streams, I always wanna have as much stream data as possible and monitor the stream health. So this new status screen has all that. It's got video preview, it's got audio levels and audio waveform, a uh, previous history of like what's been streaming out. It has your encoding status, your cache status, uh, plus also has a lot of other technical stuff that I wasn't even aware of, it was a little bit over my head, uh, but it's all there and you know, you can you know, better monitor your stream to make sure that you can foresee if there might be any issues coming up. Uh, so the price point for the new version is exactly the same. It is $495, but it does have a control panel included, so it's sort of like you save 100 bucks. Uh, so it's obviously much more targeted at high-end use, but if you fit that market, uh, this looks like a phenomenal streaming encoder. And lastly, the new Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. So now this is not just an internal upgrade to the 6K camera, 
It's a bigger and beefier body. Uh, their goal is to bring some of the features from the Ursa Mini into the Pocket Cinema Camera line. It's got an upgraded 6K sensor. It has a new, brighter LCD screen, which can also flip out so you can adjust the angle. And also, most impressively, uh, to me, my most impressive feature, it has built-in ND filters, uh, ND2, 4, and 6 stop filters. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen uh, an ND filter built into a DSLR-style body. So ND is a necessity if you're filming outside where it's super bright, uh, but you still want to have a nice f-stop at 4 or 2.8, or sometimes you just need ND, even if you were to close your aperture all the way down to like F22, it might still be too bright. And you need ND to get a usable image, ND being neutral density. Uh, so that just cuts out the amount of light that enters the camera. Normally you'd screw on an ND filter uh, under the front of your lens, but having it built in makes things a lot quicker and easier, especially if you're in an environment where you're constantly switching from filming inside and outside. Built-in ND is something that you usually see on a bigger body camera, so it's really great and really impressive to see it here on a DSLR-sized type body. Uh, the Pro model also adds a second mini XLR connection, so now it can accept two audio inputs and both provide phantom power. They also announced two new accessories for this model, an electronic viewfinder and a new battery grip. There's also a free camera update across all the Pocket Cinema cameras, which includes upgraded color profiles and an RGB histogram monitor. The 6K Pro will sell for $24.95, uh, the viewfinder will be $4.95, and the battery grip, $145. Batteries not included. Links to all the product pages with more info and specs can be found in the show notes in the description below. Let me know what you're most excited about, and if you're going to be putting any of these products to use, I'm very tempted to pick up an ATEMP Extreme and see if I could switch workflows from vMix over to something hardware-based. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next episode.